In this video, we're going on a day trip between Lake Tekapo and the Mount Cook National Park. In my time as tour guide and travel designer, I've been many times to these locations and I want to share that information with you so you can plan your trip to New Zealand as best as possible. My name is Michael, so let's get started. So just a quick information on Lake Tekapo itself. It's located on the eastern side of the Southern Alps, which run throughout the South Island here from north to south. Uh, it's located on uh, Lake Tekapo, uh, the name of the lake, it's the same as the village. So Lake Tekapo is a perfect location for people to stay a couple of nights and actually use it as a base to go into the Mount Cook National Park. Let's have a quick look about uh, the village itself. It's not that large, but there's a number of accommodation options available, as you can see in the map. I don't want to go through all of them, but yeah, I mean, these are obviously a little bit more quiet. They're bed and breakfasts, they're kind of uh, resort type, they're holiday homes, holiday cottages, quite a few of them. Um, so just uh, you can check that out. There are many websites about that. This one, this place is obviously very famous, the, the Church of the Good Shepherd, um, very famous for the picturesque views. So just let's have a quick look at that. So you've probably seen that in other, in other travel videos, so I don't want to go into details here, but it just gives you a first glimpse of the location, how beautiful it is. So, okay, then on the other side of the channel, this is, by the way, this is the channel between uh, Lake Tekapo and Lake Pukaki. Uh, it's all used for hydroelectricity production. So on the other side of town, we have uh, the main center, we have a supermarket, we have all the facilities you want to know about. We want, to, you also want to know about the dark uh, sky project. This is a very cool kind of a stargazing. This is in the village, you can actually also do some stargazing, subject to weather conditions, of course. But yeah, just a quick information on that one, so you're aware what is available in Lake Tekapo itself. Then we moving out from Lake Tekapo. It's around about a good hour you have to calculate going into the Mount Cook National Park. Let's say, you know, an hour and a half really to, to, to make the most out of it because there will be, there will be stops on the way, like here, Lake Pukaki viewpoint um, on a fine day. I mean, this is hard to beat. Uh, you've got Mount Cook here in the distance, the highest peak in New Zealand, 3,753. And we've got Mount Tasman besides. So this is a stunning location. It's that kind of turkeys kind of uh, water color, which comes through the, uh, the glacier sediment. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is um, Lake Pukaiki. So, and uh, yeah, you were traveling here now on SH8 before you turn right into SH80. This is a no exit road. So there's no connection between the Eastern side of the Southern Alps and the West Coast here. So there's no connection. So you have to drive in into uh, Mount Cook um, and you'd have to drive out again. In Mount Cook, uh, there's also accommodation available but I'll get there in a minute. So when you head north here, there's, um, there's also a couple of accommodations. If you want to stay a little bit uh, more remote, there's a, there's a retreat accommodation, and there's also further down here, Lake Stone Lodge is a cool place right on the main road. If you prefer to be a little bit more outside than uh, not staying in Lake Tekapo. So yeah, and as many as many places, um, you have viewpoints like here, you know, right on the lake. I mean, this is just incredible. Therefore, I say, you know, if you have a fine day, and this is the road, by the way, going going towards the west, um, towards Mount Cook, you can see that in the distance. Yeah, on a fine day, you need to calculate in a little bit more time because the scenery is so stunning, and you probably naturally want to stop here. Glen Tanner, little airport uh, for scenic flights into the into the mountains. Uh, those scenic flights are the helicopter and the smaller fixed wing Mount Cook airline going for scenic flights into the mountains. This is yeah one of the places you can do that. The other thing with uh, Glen Tanner, there's also a holiday park. You can either do stay here with your motorhome camper van, but they also have kind of cabin facilities at Glen Tanner. So you continue traveling further north, again, some few points you want to stop and you're really approaching Mount 
Cook Village, which is at the end here. We're getting there in a minute. Auraki is the Maori name for, for Mount Cook. There's another little airport. It's Mount Cook Airport, which is also a good base for um, helicopter flights. They do uh, heli hiking, which means you go onto the glacier and you do uh, walking on the ice. So that's a very popular option. And you can also do just normal helicopter flights with a landing up in the in the on, on the ice field or on the snow field. This is a fixed wing plane, and they also land on the on the snow fields in the top. So that's quite exciting. Something something different. That is the view from the tops um, heading, looking towards the eastern side. So you can see in front of you that kind of dirty part here. This is actually Mount, uh, this is the Tasman Glacier. We've got the Tasman Lake, which has been formed over the last 20 years or so. They're little icebergs and they do actually tours in there. I'll talk about that in a minute. And yeah, and then we have uh, Lake Pukaki here in the background. And uh, that's where the, the road also heads into the Mount Cook village. Right, we're coming now into the main village, our Rocky Mount Cook. So we have a few accommodation options here in the village. We have motels, we have some cabins, we chalets. They're pretty much um, basic accommodation, except for the, the Hermitage Hotel. This is the kind of by far the most um, luxurious place to stop at and with stunning views. They have a number of room options here, but yeah, you want to be mindful. This is uh, obviously a large scale hotel. Uh, it's not everybody's piece of cake. But um, yeah, it's it's obviously the best location because on a fine day, you can see right out there towards uh, Mount Cook. But we want to talk a little bit more really about the, the local walks and one, what you can do here. So one of them is the most famous one, obviously, is the Hooker Valley Walk. So Hooker Valley, let's zoom in here a little bit. It's heading into that kind of valley we've just seen before into the Hooker Valley track. Let's put in some pictures here to make it a little bit more visual. So yeah, you're walking up that valley and it's just gorgeous. It's it's very um, well maintained, uh, partly boardwalk. There's also a bridge. Uh, here's the bridge into the Hooker Valley. So this is a very popular walk. And um, in the summer season, there's a huge car park in front of it. So in the summer season, it's very popular, but obviously stunningly beautiful. The other smaller walk really is towards Kia Point. And this can be done, you know, like in half an hour or so. But what I always recommend, especially if you do longer walks, you go to the local Department of Conservation, uh, which is located right in the village and get the latest information. Sometimes tracks might be closed because there was a, you know, a, a flooding or whatever. So you need to be mindful of that. So these are the tracks going to uh, Kia Point. Uh, stunning location, so you can do that in a relatively short time frame. Got here the notice boards, you know, the typical Department of Conservation notice with times, which are normally pretty accurate. One place which often comes up when in my job as a travel agent is that um, people ask me about the, the Muller Hut. The Muller Hut is going up here. It's quite a steep one, as you can see. It's a bit of a zigzag there. It's really only uh, recommended for experienced hikers and you need to have a good level of fitness as well. This is the hut on the top. I mean, isn't that amazing? I've been there a few times and uh, on a fine day, it's look at that. I mean, you're right above the valley and you're looking into the, the mountains. So it's very spectacular. But again, only recommended if the weather conditions are good and always keep in mind the weather can change rapidly in that area. So another cool place I really love is that going up the Tasman Glacier Valley. We've seen it before, one of the pictures where I pointed out the lakes. So this is the, the glacier lakes, which was formed around about 20 years ago because of a slip. And this Tasman Glacier viewpoint is just a lovely little walk. Uh, you can get up there and the, the views are just out of this world on a, on a, on a good day as well. You right looking into the glacier, into the valley with the glacier lake. And we see here some of these uh, icebergs kind of floating there. They're breaking off the uh, Tasman Glacier. 
and you've got stunning views around you. There's also a company they're doing, they're called Glacier Explorer. They're doing those glacier tours uh, with, a, with, a, with a boat on, on, that, on that lake, and you can actually also touch those, those floating icebergs. Yeah, that, that's the road again going back towards the east. Another picture of one of the tracks. So as you can see, this is the track going into the Tasman Glacier Walk. So very well maintained and um, yeah, about half an hour or so one way. Uh, again, always keep in mind weather conditions can change rapidly. Always have a jacket with you. Bring some food, bring some water and just be prepared and have, you know, comfortable walking shoes. You don't need to have boots, but have comfortable and then solid walking shoes. So in the village itself, again, we have a couple of places. Um, as I pointed out before, you want to check out. Here's the uh, Department of Conservation Information Center worthwhile popping in and checking out um, not only about the, the, the state of the tracks, but also a little bit about the history, uh, geology, etc., etc. So this is a good place uh, to start your day trip in the Mount Cook National Park. There's also a guiding company here, Alpine Guides Iraqi. They do uh, heli hiking trips. They do also alpine trips. I mean, for a really serious mountaineer. But yeah, it's they do all sorts of trips. And if you want to go for a guided walk um, with a local guide, that's also a possibility. So in the Glacier Explorer company I mentioned before, this is located with the Hermitage Hotel. So this is a company which belongs to the Hermitage Hotel. So that's what it looks like going out with that kind of boat into the lake with the floating iceberg so it's a spectacular walk uh, it starts basically with a walk what we've seen before on that hike on the Tasman hike and uh, then they have a kind of a little jetty which um, is located obviously on that lake and then they go out it takes around about the whole trip I think is about two and a half or three hours all together with walking in and the transfers from the village so Often what I recommend is that you might have a heli hike in the morning and a walk in the afternoon, or you do the, the Glacier Explorer in the afternoon. So there's lots to do. So it will fill up all day when you travel in from Tekapo. If you start eight o'clock in the morning, you, you really have a full day of action and exploration in the Mount Cook National Park. So therefore, really recommend to stay at least a couple of nights in the area to be able to explore as, as well as possible. So as you can see, there's lots to explore between Lake Tekapo and Mount Cook National Park. Hope you enjoyed this little video and you got value out of it. Please subscribe to more videos I'm doing on all sorts of areas in the South and the North Island. Any comments, put them in the comments fields and see you in the next video.